Hey everyone, today I wanted to share with you a lecture from my latest course on building a Next.js application connected to a Next.js backend. In particular, I want to share with you how we can authenticate a Next.js application to that Next.js server using authentication cookies. Now, there's a few extra steps we have to go through when implementing authentication on a Next.js app versus using just a regular React app. We'll also see some of the benefits of using Next.js in this lecture. If you like what you see and you'd like to get access to the full course as it's being released and worked on, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get access to it on my site. All right, let's jump right in and see how we can implement cookie-based authentication on a Next.js app. All right, so briefly before we jump in, I'll leave the code for this lecture in the description as well. If you'd like to see how we're setting our authentication cookie on the back end, we're simply calling response.cookie in this Nest.js server to set an authentication cookie. It's gonna be secure, HTTP only, and have an expiration date on it. And so we're returning this authentication cookie from our login route, which we're calling in our Next.js app. With this out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in on the Next.js side and see how we can actually utilize this response cookie to authenticate further calls. All right, so let's get started in actually making sure that we set cookies on our Next.js server after we get the login response back from our Next.js server. So to start off, we'll need to go to our login server action, and we actually need to get the underlying raw response return from this post function and that's because we need to access the cookies on this response where we know the authentication cookie from our Next.js server will have been set. So to do this, I wanna create a new parameter here called post options. And let's go ahead and create a type for this first. So in our common folder, I'm gonna go ahead and create a post options dot interface. So I'll export class post options and here I want to add a new parameter called return res which is a boolean and of course make sure this is actually an interface here so this return res parameter is going to be supplied by callers if they want to get the raw response returned from this method so let's go ahead and add this post options parameter of type post options and I want this to be optional because we don't need to supply it However, we can now check to see at the end here if res is passed, then we'll go ahead and return that raw response after still parsing for an error. So now I wanna go back to login and now we can pass in this options object and specify we want to return res as true. So now we need to rename this const here as error or res because it could be either depending on if a error was returned or it's the actual response to see if this is an error which we know we want to return back to our client component if error or res exists and quote error in error or res then we know that this type coming back is of course the error object type because it has the error property set on it so now typescript will be okay with this and we can simply return this error or res, which we know at this point will be the error back to the client. Otherwise, at this point, we now have the response and we can go ahead and now check to see if we have this authentication cookie set on the res login response. So I'm gonna create a new const called set cookie header and set it equal to error or res dot and you can see here that TypeScript is actually smart enough to now know that this type is going to be a response because we've already checked to see if it's an error type here. It knows that it has to be a response at this point. And on the response, we have the dot headers dot get to get this header from this map. And the header we're looking for is the set cookie header, which is going to be set if we successfully authenticated and our Next.js server is actually setting our cookie. So if set cookie header is actually now defined and our Next.js server is setting that auth cookie, then I want to actually pull the JWT token off of it. 
So let's create a new const called token and set it equal to set cookie header dot split. And we want to split at the semicolon, access the first array element, and then call dot split again, split on equal sign and access the second array element. And now that we have the actual JWT string itself, I want to go ahead and decode the JWT because if you recall on our JWT, we are actually setting both the expiration and the issue date on it from our Nest.js server. Now I want to decode this token so that we know when it expires and we can now set a Next.js server cookie to expire at the same time. So in order to decode this, we're going to utilize a new library, npm install, save, and it's going to be called JWT decode. So this is another great benefit of Next.js as we've discussed before. We're installing this dependency JWT decode to do this work of decoding a JWT. And this actual dependency, of course, since we're utilizing it only on this server action here, the login server action, which is executed on the server, this dependency we're now going to utilize is never actually going to be loaded on the client. So we're going to keep our client side much lighter, and this helps with performance. Additionally, we're not going to suffer any performance from actually decoding the token or doing any of this actual work, because again, it's all happening on the server side away from that main thread on the UI. So it keeps our UIs really responsive and snappy, lightweight, which is a big benefit of using Next.js. So now at this point, we have the token and we can decode it. We can finally set this cookie on our actual Next.js server. So as I said before, when we get this response back from the Next.js server on this login call, the Next.js server is setting the response set cookie header, but the Next.js server won't actually set a cookie on the server side unless we explicitly do so. So we have to manually do this by calling the cookies function from next slash headers. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we can later on utilize this JWT auth cookie in our actual fetch calls to our server. Otherwise, Next.js will not save this cookie for us by default. So we have to set it by calling cookies.set, and then we provide the cookie object. So we have a name. I'll call this authentication, just the same as we've done on the server. I'm gonna set the value to the actual underlying JWT string that we've just pulled off of the set cookie header. Then I'm gonna set secure to true and HTTP only to true. So again, this is gonna make our Next.js server cookie as secure as possible. Secure will ensure it's only sent on encrypted HTTPS connections. And HTTP only, again, means we can't access it through client-side JavaScript. Finally, for the expires attribute, I want to set this as a new date and use the decoded token, which we can now get access to by calling JWT decode from the JWT-decode library. And then pass in our JWT token and then I want to access the .exp property and multiply this by a thousand to turn it into the milliseconds value that this expires expects. I'm also going to explicitly declare that .exp exists on our JWT. We always know we're including it from our Nest.js server. So now at this point, we are actually getting the Nest.js server side authentication cookie off of the login response and then we're setting our own Next.js server-side cookie so that we can utilize it later on when we make requests to our Next.js server. Let's go ahead and test this functionality out on our UI. All right, so now back in our UI, let's go ahead and open up our network tab here and log in using valid credentials. And so now at this point, after logging in, if I were to refresh the page, and click on one of these requests to our Next.js server, we can actually see we now have a cookies tab here. And that's because we've actually successfully set our cookie on the Next.js server, the authentication cookie, HTTP only cookie that's gonna be sent between our client and server. So this is great. We now have this HTTP only cookie available when calling our Next.js server. The final step is to actually utilize this JWT cookie when we're calling our next our Nest.js backend in subsequent requests. 
To do this, let's go ahead and update our common fetch wrapper. All right, so before we update our common fetch function, I wanna go ahead and show you a request that we're gonna to make to a protected route in our backend. We of course know, looking at our user's controller, we have the current get me request that we've protected with our JWT auth guard. Let's go ahead and try calling this protected route from our UI so we can see how it works with and without authentication. To do this, we're gonna implement data fetching on our Next.js app. Now we're gonna go into data fetching in much greater detail later on, but for now I want to just quickly get up a query to our backend so we can see this authentication in action. So essentially what I wanna do is I wanna to go to our root page.tsx where we know our homepage is actually living since this is the root route component. And I want to call that get me route on this component. So let's go ahead and simply create another server action to do this. That's how we are going to query, simply using the fetch API just as we've done before. So I'll create a new getme.ts server action. We'll label it use server. And I'm gonna export default, the getme function. And so this is gonna go ahead and again, call our route using the fetch API. So let's do that, we'll await fetch. And we're not gonna use a common fetch wrapper yet. I just want to see what this looks like without it first. So let's go ahead and supply our API URL to the backend. And then we know we go to users slash me where our users controller is of course listening. So this is all we need for this get request. And I'll simply return me.json to parse the incoming JSON. So now to utilize this in our homepage component, Next.js makes this super easy to do. We can put in an async to this function, and now we can use top level await inside of this. So I can go ahead and say const me is equal to await get me from our server action, and I'll log out the response here. All right, so let's go ahead and now take a look at this request on the homepage. I'll go ahead and refresh the page. And now if we go to our Next.js server logs, we can actually see we have an unauthorized 401 coming back from the back end on this call. And that's of course, as we'd expect, because we're not actually sending any cookies from our Next.js server to the Next.js backend by default. We have the auth cookie saved between the client and server, but now we need to pass it to the Next.js backend manually in this fetch call. To do this, we can add a request init object, have headers here, and now we can manually supply this cookie header. And now I want to pass all of our Next.js server cookies into this request, which is going to include that authentication cookie that we have. So we can call cookies dot to string. And now we're gonna go ahead and do that, pass all of our cookies on our Next.js server to the Next.js backend. Now, if we go ahead and refresh the page, and go back to our logs, we can see we have the user response coming back from the back end, where we have our users decoded JWT. So this is excellent. We're now successfully authenticating to our back end thanks to this JWT cookie we're supplying. Finally, let's go ahead and abstract this functionality out into our common fetch wrapper. Firstly, I wanna go to the util fetch. And now in here, I'll also go ahead and export const get now which is going to be the HTTP get implementation for our common fetch wrapper. So all we have to take in here now is the path of type string. And for now, we'll simply call await fetch, pass in our API URL, and then the path. We'll set this equal to the const res, and we'll simply return res.json. So in the future, we'll implement error handling for this when we dive deeper into data fetching. For now, I simply wanna fetch and return the JSON. Of course, don't forget to add the variable path to our full fetch call here. Now, lastly, I want to make sure we have this common JWT authentication cookie added for both all of our get and post calls. So I'll create a new common function to do this. I'll create const get headers. So let's go ahead and return this object where we know we can simply pass in 
the cookie that we're currently utilizing in our get me query. I'll copy this and I'll go ahead and return this cookie property where we need to import from next headers. So go ahead and now spread everything from this get headers call. So that will include the JWT auth cookie that we're going to pass to all post requests now. And we'll do the same thing for get requests here. So I'll have an options object, specify headers, and I'll go ahead and spread everything from get headers as well. So now let's go ahead and utilize this common get function in the get me query. Go ahead and now return a call to get from util fetch and pass in our path of users slash me. So now if we go back to the UI, I'll go ahead and again, refresh, go ahead and look at our logs. And we still of course see the user object being logged out here in the logs, which is showing that our common get call is utilizing the JWT auth cookies as expected. And now we have these common fetch wrapper implementations. We can utilize them for all of our requests in our app to make sure we're always authenticated for every request. Thanks to this common JWT auth cookie we're setting as soon as we get back the response from our login server action. So now at this point, we have common authentication enabled on all of our application. Let's go ahead and see how we can actually protect certain pages so that we prevent users from accessing different pages if they're not actually authorized. We can do this with the help of Next.js middleware, which we'll go ahead and look at in the next lecture.